15 from verse 7 to 24. Let's put it on screen. We all are going to read together. Luke chapter 15 from verse 7 to verse 24. Luke chapter 7, uh, chapter 15, sorry, 7 to 24. Principles that makes prayer and fasting effective. Now, I'll read verse 27, you read verse 28, till we get to verse 24. Are we set? Hallelujah. Let's just be seated. Verse 7. Where's verse 7? I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Now you read verse 8. Let's go. Your voice is low. Is it because you are seated? Verse 9. I want to read verse 9. Let's go. We have a very fast, uh, long scripture. And when she had found it, she calls her friends and neighbors together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I, found, for I have found the peace which I lost. Now you read verse 10. Please be fast about it. Thank you. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Verse 11. Okay, verse 11. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. You read verse 12. Of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. He now divided to them his livelihood. Now verse 13, let's go. And the youngest, sorry, and the young of them said to his father, we've taken this, show me verse 13. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, all together, joining to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. Now you read verse 14. started to lack again. Verse 15. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him, him into the field to feed swine. You read verse 16. No one gave him anything. Verse 17. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. Now you read verse 18. Let's go. Hmm. I'll read verse 19. And I am no, younger, no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Now you read verse 20. Where is it? Verse 20. Thank you. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Verse 21. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Now you read verse 22. But the father said to him, his servant, bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. Wow. Verse 23, I read, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and marry. Now you read verse 24. As we summarize, let's go. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Now they continue, thank you for the reading. They continue to celebrate after that lost son was brought back to the father's house. Now can I tell you this truth? 
that according to verse 7 of uh, chapter uh, that chapter that we read it says uh, there is joy in heaven when one sinner repents now i put it this way in my notes when you make yourself a reason for the joy in heaven hear me you will be favored from heaven when you make yourself the reason for the joy in heaven you will be favored from heaven now when you are the reason why there is joy in heaven the bible says listen that there is joy in heaven when one sinner turns to god when one sinner is uh, repents there's joy in heaven now if you are the one the source of that joy what do you think will happen it means that from heaven you shall be favored if you are the reason why somebody turned to jesus why somebody decide to serve god what do you think will happen god will reward you he will bring favor from heaven i wrote here you'll be favored from heaven and when you are favored from heaven the art will not be able to hinder your greatness when you are favored from heaven the art will not be able to hinder your greatness now permit me this morning to say evangelism in bracket soul winning brings extra joy to the heavens where god dwells soul winning brings extra joy to the heavens where god dwells now which means that every single time a soul is won what happens in heaven there is joy there is rejoicing now that's why after you have fasted and prayed one of the things that will make your fasting and prayer to be effective is when you make up your mind that you will win souls you will let people uh, uh, know jesus so that they can leave the realm of darkness and come into the realm of light I put it like this again in my notes that angelic bodies rejoice when people turn from sinful ways to follow Jesus. When people turn from sinful ways to follow Jesus, angelic bodies rejoice. Hallelujah. So soul winning makes God happy. Now can you imagine what you do when you are happy? Now for instance, if your son or daughter comes back from school and tell you, mommy, daddy, I want to show you my results and he brought the result to you and it is a all true you know a one a one a one a one a one what will you do you will rejoice in fact at that point eh, you might make a promise that you may not even have capacity to be able to reach you know i was celebrating my daughter when she came she said that daddy I've, I've seen my 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 hundred level result now when she brought it i was we were rejoicing a is all true I was glad. And we said to her, if you make it like this throughout, it means you will graduate in first class. Oh, I was glad. I said, okay, mention you. What do you want? Do I know the movie saw? I know the movie saw. <laughs> Few days after, she reminded me, hey, daddy, you said if I do well, I will, you know, I am not God. Man can make promise and not have capacity to fulfill it. You know, uh, when she asked me, they said, Daddy, you promised. I said, but I've paid for your next school fees now. <laughs> Don't worry. Remind me later. Remind me later. <laughs> you know, but can you put yourself in the shoes of God? He owns the universe. What kind of promise does he want to make that I cannot fulfill? When you are the reason for the joy in heaven. Now, and how can you bring joy to heaven? Just like we have said, today we'll be learning on what it takes to win souls into the kingdom of god so we are looking at steps we should take to win souls because you should understand that soul winning requires a lot of strategy soul winning requires what a lot of strategy it's not something you just wake up and say you want to go and do because it's a spiritual thing but it's something that you should do in order to make god happy and the bible says when a man's ways is pleasing to god God will make even his enemies to be at peace with him. So let's look at the strategies one after the other. I'll speak on just three in this service and we'll close. Hallelujah. I, I can't hear you. Hallelujah. So let's look at number one. Strategy number one. Now I call it the prayer of intercession. The prayer of intercession for the lost souls. The prayer of intercession for the lost souls. You know, in church today, we are taught on different kind of prayers. And 
I want to tell you that 99% of the prayers we pray in church, we pray it for where? For who? For ourselves. In fact, if we ask some of you to, 99% of the prayers you pray at home, you pray for yourself. Our mothers, we pray for their children. Because if you see some mother, if you see true mothers, if you go to their Bibles, what will you see? You will see the pictures of their children in their Bible. In fact, most times, anytime we are saying the confessional prayer to summarize our service, I used to listen to my wife. Number one, she would say, I shall not die, but live to declare the goodness of God. Number two, she said, my children shall not die, but live to declare the goodness of God. Number three, she would say, my husband will not die and live to declare. And I said to myself, me, I used to say, I shall not die, number one. I shall not die, number two. I shall not die, number three. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, and I discovered that the two major things that bothers women, their husband and their children. The major thing that bothers the man, how will I prosper? Eh? So that I can meet the need of my family. Ah, Abby? But let's not talk about that now. Now, what we are talking about now, let's concentrate, is that we must learn to include what we call the prayer of intercession for the lost. So winning does not be, be begin with preaching. So winning begins with intercession. That is where you see people that are not yet born again and you begin to mention them in your prayer time. You begin to tell God about them. Now, when somebody refuses to give his life to Christ, listen, he's not doing it purposely. Some of them are under a spell. They are under demonic bondage. Now, some of them are under different kinds of things that if you don't pray for them, there is no how they can be delivered. I wrote here, everyone who is not yet saved is lost. They are under the bondage of Satan as believers to be part of the evangelical move of God you need to deliberately create time to intercede for sinners. Now, can I tell you this simple truth that everybody don't know? God hates sin, but he loves sinners. God doesn't hate sinners, he hates sin. Because a lot of people say, ah, ah, when you see sinners at times, the way you preach, you know, in you want to mutsi, you want to shagri, you know, you know, you want to you know, you know, the way we preach it as if we don't even want them to repent. But look at the case of that woman in the Bible. Uh, that woman that was caught in adultery. You remember her case? The Bible says she was caught in the very act. Now, and when they, they, they brought her to Jesus, they said, according to the law of Moses, Moses said, we must stone her to death. Jesus now said, I don't dispute that, but if there is anyone in, among you that have not committed sin, let that person be the first person to stone this woman to death. And nobody could stone her. Everybody left. And the Bible says, Jesus now looked at the woman and said to the woman, and said, woman, did they condemn you? He said, no, sir. They didn't condemn me. He said, if they didn't condemn you, I myself did not condemn you. But go and do what? Sin no more. It is sin that God hates, not the sinners. That's why, as a child of God, don't be rejoicing when terrible things happen to sinners. Mama, yo. Yes. Mama, yo. Yes. No, 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 no. Don't rejoice. Instead, let us be praying for them. Because the foundation for genuine soul winning is not preaching. The salvation for genuine soul winning is intercession. That's why, ask if you ask uh, our assembly pastor, I keep telling him, if there's anything bothering my heart most, it's our intercessory group. You know, we meet every day, 12 to 1. I always tell him, Apo, no matter what, make sure that prayer is on. Let us pray for the people. That everyone that enters the church, they will have what we call conviction, encounter for salvation. Let us pray for every sinner that we know. That's why you don't start by preaching to them because somebody held them bound. Have you read that part of the scripture before? Where Jesus our Lord said, how can you take the goods of a strong man without first doing what? Without first binding the strong man. Some people are held bondage by the strong man of religion. Some people are held bondage by demons that their father's house made covenant with. So when you preach to them, they don't understand. So winning begins with what? Intercession. 
I wrote here, don't hate them. Don't hate them because God loves them. He loved them to the point of offering his son to die for sinners in order for them to gain access to salvation in Christ. Hallelujah. And I bracket it. Please don't rejoice when terrible things happen to sinners. Now, perhaps you don't know that prayer is powerful. Let's go to Acts of Apostles chapter 12. Let's look at the power of prayer. Acts chapter 12 from verse 1. Let's look at the power of prayer. Acts of Apostles chapter 12 from verse 1. Let's see the power of prayer. The prayer of intercession. Now look at this. I begin to read. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some of the church, some from the church. Then he killed James, the brother of John, with a sword, having killed him. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. Now it was during the days of unleaving bread. It was only the days of unleaving bread. Let's move on. So he went, uh, so he went, he, sorry, sorry. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. Oh, look at the church didn't have any other thing. But look at what he did. Peter was kept, therefore, oh, sorry, Peter was therefore kept in prison. But what? But what? Constant prayer was offered to God for him by the church. Intercession is praying for. Now, what is intercession? It's when you are standing in the gap for somebody else. That's what it means to be, uh, to be interceding, uh, interceded for. You have to be praying. That's why I was sharing at the uh, barrier of, uh, uh, you know, uh, service. I was sharing on Friday at the wake up service that my father was a Muslim all his life. But I, anytime I want to preach to him, he'll tell me, Pastor, Pastor, oh, fiele, 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 mile, fiele, esin, yami, ati baba, misile. And I kept praying, Lord, please give my father in cancer until the day he was sick, not knowing that that is the day he will die. Right there on the sick bed, I came there, you know, did, paid the bills of the hospital. And while we were talking, I said, Daddy, Daddy, or Jesus Timothy this issue that I've been talking to you about Jesus. Daddy, what do you what do you want to say about it? Will you accept Jesus now? And Alaji, I know what he said. Stay, why are you here? You know what he said? My father looked at me and said, Pastor, man, bah. that is, I'm ready now to accept him. I led him to Christ on the hospital bed. I was happy. I didn't know he was going to die a few, few minutes after. Then after some minutes, the doctors called me, Pastor, well, we can't do your case here at this hospital. We have to move your daddy to UCH. So they gave us referral letter. And while we were going from our dear ear, as we got to Femi Johnson, my daddy smiled. He smiled and he gave up. We didn't know. My brother was sitting beside, my stepbrother sitting beside, was saying, ah, Alaji Martin Rerin, Alaji Martin Rerin, we are around one year, I shot in Lolly, one year, we turn low. I was glad. I was so happy. Sincerely, I was so happy that at least, at last, my father is in heaven. Now, do you know that throughout my mother's life too, that was how I was praying. My mother loved going to church. She had church encounter, but I was not sure of her salvation. You know why I was not sure of, her, of my mother's salvation? Because, you know, uh, she had this understanding that if my mother wants you to do something, she will lie that she got a dream. So lying was part of her own born again. But I started praying for my mom. Lord, please give my mom encounter. I can't imagine me being in heaven and my parents are in hell. I thank the Lord. It was dying minutes too. She just called me, Pastor and we started talking pray for me and we started talking about us uh, mommy let's just do the prayer of the dedication of life she did it we kept doing follow, follow up not knowing that she would die the following week intercede don't open your eyes and let any member of your family go to hello because if you look at the story of Lazarus the rich man uh, I mean the poor man and that rich man they were able to recognize themselves even then the rich man was in Abraham's bosom that signifies points to heaven. 
the Lazarus, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the, uh, Lazarus was in uh, the Abraham's house. Rich man was in hell, and the rich man was able to recognize Lazarus there. That tell Lazarus to dip his hand inside water to come and give me. It means that if any of your family member go to hell, they will recognize you. They will be calling you their ah uh, ah uh, ah uh, eh uh, uh, Monica. Ikaneo. So see a monkey need love no how. That's why. How do you preach to them? You start by praying for them. No matter how wicked your family members are, don't hate them. God does not hate sinners. He hates their sin. Hallelujah. So look at the power of the prayer. Okay, let's go on. The, the church now began to pray. Show us. Let's go. And when Herod was about to bring him out, that night, Peter was sleeping, bound with two chains, between two soldiers, and the guards before the doors were keeping the prison. What now happened? Now behold, what happened? An angel of the Lord stood by him, and a light shone in the prison, and he struck Peter on the side, and raised him up, and said, Arise quickly. His chains fell off his hands. You know what you are doing when you are praying? You are calling for supernatural intervention. Ulua, Dasi, Latoro. Prayer is a call for supernatural intervention. So when you are praying for sinners, when you are praying for unbelievers, you know what you are saying? Lord, please intervene. I want them to be saved. I don't know how to do it, but Lord, come into their matter. Lord, intervene. Now, look at how the angel came. Then the angel said to him, guard yourself and tie on your sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, put on your garment and follow me. Now, and Peter did as well. Move on, move on, move on. We have don't have time so he went out and followed him and did not know that what was done by the angel was real but thought he was seeing a vision he thought he was seeing a vision and when they had passed the first and the second guard post they came to the iron gates that led to the city which opened to them of its own accord and they went out and went down uh, uh, and went down one street and immediately the angel departed can you see it's enough like that because the church prayed. If you have any sinner around you, anyone that refused to accept your way, the way of salvation, start by praying for them. You know, when you are praying for sinners, it's like you are watering the ground before you plant your seed. It makes the ground soft. It makes their hearts too to be ready for salvation. Am I communicating? So don't let any of your family members go to hell. Don't let any of your friends go to hell. In fact, there was a time I was praying for somebody. That person is close to me. You know, I didn't like his kind of Christianity. He lies so much. He does ter ter some terrible things I didn't like. So I came to the altar here and I started praying, Father, please, Lord, I want you to give him an encounter of genuine salvation so that he can change. Even if it will lead to him going to prison because of this is character, so that when he returns, he will serve you. Sir, do you know that that was how it happened? He went to prison. It was in the prison. He said he made up his mind. I won't do this thing again. I will serve God. He came out and he became fireful for Jesus. God answers prayers. He will answer your prayer. I say he will answer your prayer. Let's go to number two. Hallelujah. And while we are still running up this, he said, let's, let's not join the team to populate hell. Imagine that how do you populate and you don't care in your bar and you can make heaven as long as I make heaven no 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 no. this is my own covenant with God every of my family member must make heaven that's my number one priority my covenant with God every of my family member so I'm glad my father and mother have made it I'm still praying for my, my sisters my sister is one is a pastor you know and my brother two of them are ministers I'm still praying for them Lord, may they not fall on the wayside. Oh Lord, oh pull them. Help them to be faithful to the end. So you, you have a strong assignment to carry out. You will succeed in your assignment. All your family members will make it to God's kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's look at the second thing to do. We are looking at steps to take in soul winning. Number two, the display of good character, sorry, the display of good Christian character attract sinners to Jesus the display of good Christian character 
attract sinners to Jesus. Now, to two money you back pay, see about fee, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, Iwawa Kulongo Christi, yeah. Oman Jeki, I like that, but continue to work by Jesu. Taba fee, wa Kulongo Jesu. Can you see that? I've not talked about preaching at all. Where did I start from? Intercession prayer. What's number two? Display of good Christian character. Ah, sister, brother, if you live with some Christians, you will never wish to be a Christian in your life. I'm telling you what I have seen. If you live with some Christians, you will never wish to become a Christian. In fact, you will want to backslide. A few days ago, I was driving out of our estate. My wife was in the car. My children were in the car. I think we were coming to church. And I saw hefty, hefty men at the gate of our estate. Ah, When I looked clearly, landlords. And they held lists of debtors. I didn't know it was debtors at first. Lists in their hands. And as I parked in front of the gate, they said, ah, let pastor pass. It's not on this list. And I'll say, what happened? They said, these are lists, are names of people that refuse to pay for vigilante. Some are owing one year. Some are owing, I'm going somewhere out. Ah. Then while I was, I was in the car, one Muslim man came to see me. He said, Pastor, do you know that on this list, there are pastors that are not like you? You are owing, you are paying. Why not use your life to talk to them? If they call themselves pastor, nobody will follow them with this character. Ah! Or don't touch me. He said, but we know your record. I know I've told you here before, there is nothing they are doing in our community that I don't put my money into it. Even no matter how small. If somebody put 20 million, I can put 20,000. But we could come in my could that. But that day, I knew the, the meaning. Which means, if I had been part of the debtors, they would have stopped me. They would have said, They are in on Shia Lono. Sherry, am I the key? She let my shell to my mum come in my socket. She am alone like the way. My good, my mad bad work you do, I shall say. Don't go just put an initial essay. You want no man, you know what? Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't be, don't behave in such a way that will make you to be saying, and, and you call and you call yourself a Christian. If this how Christianity is, I I rather die as a sinner. The display of good Christian character is another thing that wins souls. When you make your sorry, when you make up your mind that you will live your life in accordance to God's instruction, hear me. People will love to serve the God you are serving. When you make up your mind, that's why if you read Daniel chapter 6, the Bible says they tried to look for fault in Daniel, they could not find one. They couldn't find one fault in Daniel. That's why even the king was worried when they put him in the nails then. But when Daniel came out, what did he say? He said, ah, ah, your God, who you continually serve, everybody knew that Daniel was serving God. Beloved, so winning requires good Christian character. Good Christian character. Don't use your mouth to say you are a Christian. Let people look at you. I went yesterday to buy um, meat at the market. So when I, there's this man I used to buy meat from. So as I got there, I told him, hey Joe, hey, get for me. You know, cut meat for me. While he was cutting, I told him, no, this is too small. He added to it. He now said, Pastor, Ejo, Egbadura for me. Ah, pastor, please pray for me. I said, who told you I'm a pastor? How do you know that I'm a pastor? You know what the man said in Yoruba language? Ejo, Egbadura for me. Right there in the market, I started praying. Pastor, Hey, hey. Me, the war suit, track suit, Timothy Joglar, at it shirt, t shirt, come over. It 
It is not what you say that is important. It is how you live. I will show you what Christianity is as we go on in this message. Am I flowing? I say praise the Lord. Listen, people will love to serve the God. Just like, like I said, why? Christianity, hear me, is standing on, on the virtue called love. What is Christianity standing on? Love. Let me show you what Christianity is. Luke chapter 10, 25 to 28. Let's look at what Christianity is. Luke chapter 10, 25 to 28. Let's look at it. King James Version, thank you. Look at this. Then he said to them, The harvest truly. No, no, no. 25. Yes. And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Hello. He said to them, to him, What is, what is written in the law? What is your reading of it? Verse 27. So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. Move on. Verse something at 28. And he said to him, you have answered rightly. Jesus is the one speaking here. Do this and you have eternal life. That's you will live. So what is Christianity? Christianity is loving God and loving man. Now, when it comes to loving God, he said you must love him with all. Uh, did you not see it? Now, when it comes to loving God, nothing should be hidden. You must love him with all. He said, when it comes to loving man, you must love him, you must love man as. So whatever you cannot do to yourself, don't do to, your, to any man. Hello? You love God with all, you love man as yourself. So, Christianity sits on love. If you want to know how to practice real Christianity, find out what is love. Love is to care. When you say, what is love? Love is all about caring. Now, look up, look up, look up. If you say you love the Lord with all, you will not do anything to hurt him. That God has done so many things to save you. He sent his son. His son died for you. You have access to uh, uh, the Holy Spirit inside of your heart. He's protecting you. He's providing for you. Why will you now begin to do the things that will now hurt God? Why will you see your neighbor's wife and say, ah, 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 I, I need to have this woman? Why will you go and see, why will you begin to do the things that God doesn't like if you say you love God? Then he now said, okay, the second part of love is, okay, is to love your neighbor as yourself, which means that anything I cannot take, I cannot give. Anybody that understands love is the one that can practice Christianity rightly. And it is when we practice real Christianity that, see, people will be glad to want to serve the God we serve. Don't you think it will be joyful when you are in church, your biological sister is sitting beside you? Your biological brother is sitting beside you? Your family members are in Christ with you? There is no how you can achieve it without love. Now, look at what Paul the Apostle said about love. 1 Corinthians 13, let's go there. 1 Corinthians 13 from verse 1. One, we just take one to eight. First Corinthians 13 from verse 1 to 8. Let's look at it together. Are you here? Are you here? Now it says, Though I speak with the tongues of men, you Oh, this one is tongues of men. Tongues of men. What's tongues of men? You are so eloquent. This morning, our family we were talking about Walesho Yinka. He was taken to court many years ago. On the issue of uh, uh, cultism, you know they, they started cultism in the school in those days. So they were, the lawyer was not asking him question. When the lawyer asks question, and it looks as if the lawyer wants to get Wale Shuenka, Wale Shuenka will answer with hard English, heavy word. 
everybody in the court will scream. Now, that, that's what we call tongues of men. Just like if you listen to Reverend Chris Okotie, you can't be a member of his church if you don't have dictionary and Bible. He will tell you the topic of uh, the, in the, the message this morning will be speaking on the, the apocalypse of the, the resurrection. So, Kotowa apocalypse, many apocalypse, Kotomatoso, me. I might communicate tongues of men. Where, where is that scripture? He said, if I, have, I can speak tongues of men and I cannot demonstrate love. What's that? Do I speak with the tongues of men? And of angels, that of angels is something, but but I have not love. Who am I? I become a sounding brass or a clinging cymbal. I do I won't make sense if I cannot practice love. Christianity is sitting upon love. If we come to your environment, what will your neighbor say about you? Sir, what will your boss say about you? What will your customers say about you? Christianity is all about care. Now, move number two. It says, and, and though I have the gift of prophecy, wow, and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but I have not love. Now, what is the love we are talking about? Loving the Lord with all, loving your neighbor as yourself. He says, I am nothing if I don't have love and I have all the gifts of the life of the, of the world. Now, verse 3. Verse 3. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, which means you can give even without the heart of love. You know, right now, politicians are giving us, Abby, in their campaign. Do they love us? What do they want from us? Our vote. Collect their money. Oh. It's your money. Oh, you, you don't want to collect. Ah, collect their rice. Even if now one Indomie they give you, collect it. It's your money. Because once they get there, they will remember you again. So a person can bestow everything he has because he has an ambition. He may not be founded in love. And I've just shown you the example of politicians. That's what they want. I have one pastor friend too that told me that they will, dis they will cook for church members and tell them, lift up the pack and the cameraman will be showing the video. Everybody will lift up the pack of food. They think they are pastor care. They say they want to use it to collect money from America. They say, look at them. As they are lifting up those food, they are destitutes hungry people please save their souls so american missionaries we gather money together give to the pastor a person can give and love is not the reason do you understand move on let's move on move on he said no 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 we have not yet through with verse three and do i give my body to be burnt burnt but I have not love it profits me nothing. Anything you do without love cannot bring any gain. Look at now love. He now says, love suffers long. It means that people will hurt you. Have they hurt me before? Yes. Did I forgive them? Yes. Listen, let's go on. Love is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. That's it's not proud. We stop at verse 8. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not easily provoked. Love thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in iniquity. But rejoices in the truth. Move on, move on, move on, move on. Bears all things believes all things hopes all things endures all things and look at verse 8 that will stop love never fails but whenever whether there are prophecies they will fail prophecy can fail whether there are tongues they will cease tongues can cease whether there is knowledge 
it will vanish away. But love, look at it, never fails. So when people are looking at us as Christians, you know what they want to see? They want to see us live the character of Christ. And what is the character of Christ? The character of Christ is what? Love. Jesus is not self-centered. I'm sure you are out to win souls. How many people's lives have you touched in one way or the other? That's what makes them to say, Sister, please, can I follow you to church? Please, can you tell me who changed your life like this? I've had people ask me that kind of question several times. I remember where we were living before we moved to where uh, out of that place. My, uh, my wife lived now. We were married that time. One of our, the brother is now a member of our church. The father had to bring him to us. I want my son to be like you people. Now, that brother is still a member of our church till this morning. How do we win souls? Number two, we win souls by what? The display of good Christian character. Let's take number three. Number three. Number three. Number three, we win souls when we decide to obey the great commission. When we decide to obey the great commission, according to Mark chapter 16, 15 and 16, put it on screen. This is when you deliberately go out for souls in order to restore them. The great submission means, says, go ye into the world. As a Christian, evangelism is part of our assignment too. Hello? Now, it is today's Christians that don't know evangelism. When we gave our life to Christ, every Saturday, there was nothing like evangelical team. Evangelism Evangelism was compulsory to everyone. And nobody forced us. Because we had understanding that this thing, okay, show me, Mark chapter 16. Let's go there. 15 and 16. Mark 16. He said, and he said to them, to who? To every disciple, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go and preach. That is the assignment of every Christian. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. So the great commission is our assignment. We all are to go out to preach. Why am I on Facebook every day? I want to preach. Why do I use every minute to talk to people? I want to preach. I want people to come out of that world. So that they can be saved. The Great Commission. Every Christian is for every Christian. The work of evangelism is for every Christian. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Answer me now. Now, there are several ways to do this great commission. Let, let's look at it. A, B, C, D, and E. Several ways. To carry out the great commission. A, I call it one-on-one. -on -one. This is house-to-house -house evangelism. Right now, the Jehovah Witnesses are, are more effective than any other group in this one. They will knock people's up. Good morning. Can we share with you? And we that are Pentecostals, we have relaxed. When they say go for evangelism, if they didn't give you a bill to share, you don't want to go. But we are giving the assignment of the Great Commission. And don't forget what led us to this. The Bible says there is joy in heaven when one soul will uh, re repent. 
And we're telling you to evangelize so that you can be the reason for that joy. I have had several testimonies from Winner's Chapel. A couple was trusting God. They have been married for 12 years. They didn't have a child. The husband and the wife now agreed. I had this testimony many years ago. They now agreed. Let's make God happy by winning souls. That every Sunday, we will make sure we are bringing a new person to church. So two of them agreed. Every Sunday, they will, they will have started during the week talking to anybody, they, people they know around, they will now begin to give them gifts. And on Sunday, they will volunteer their car, they will go and pick them from their houses and bring them to church. They did it for some months. Frequently, the wife got pregnant. Sir, they gave birth to four. Two boys, two girls, the same time. So when the man came up to share his testimony, he said, I want to praise the Lord because the children that God has given to us are reward for our devotion to evangelism. Uliri. He said, Jiri Okon. Uliri. Are you here with me? B. The use of important dates and events to gather crowd so that the word of God can reach them. Hmm, I love this one. The use of important dates and events to gather crowd so that the word of God can reach them. Which means your birthdays, your wedding anniversaries, your housewarming ceremony, your naming ceremony, you decide to put up a party, you will have discussed with the servant of God, sir, ma, please as you come, come and preach, oh, I will gather people, come and preach. Some of you don't know that when you gather people for events, it's like you are doing crusade. Your event is the reason why they will come. Then the servants of God will minister to them. Some people have given their life to Christ before, where they went to eat in a party. Let me touch Brad Damien. Let him know that it's not in CSC. You are in God's power. Open your eyes. So learn to use your glorious event. We were at the funeral service on, on Friday. Look at what Reverend Shifeso said. He said, the woman in the coffin is the one that organized this crusade. Have you? We all gather because of who? Because of her. To give her last respect. Muslims were there. Unbelievers were there. And the word of God came. Who knows? Somebody must have been hearing the word before. But that one may be the one that will hit the hammer, the nail. The, ham on, the hammer on the nail. To some people, it may be their first seed. That they have had it. It may not work at that moment. Am I communicating? Learn to use your glorious events. That's why, see, I always say, Christians don't do parties or shouldn't do parties like unbelievers. You are, you are celebrating your glorious events and all you do is to put on put worldly music. How do you want to convince the world to come to your Jesus? Let's take C so close. See? The next one. See? Giving out evangelical materials as gifts. Giving out evangelical materials as gifts is also a source of evangelism. When you see a book that ministers to you, buy it and circulate it. D, using your resources to sponsor evangelical-minded programs done by servants of God. Using your money to sponsor evangelical-minded programs. You could sponsor a program on radio. Pastor Mieloma preach, Mama, somewhere. You could sponsor a, a couple's dinner program. Pastor, Emma, Eloni, Uma, Koswa, Lati, Lati, she couple's dinner program. Okay, I will take care of 
this, I'll take care of that. You just go and preach there. You know, some people won't come to that program if there's no, not going to be food. So we use that as an opportunity to draw them. I'm showing you ways by which you can, you can win souls. Yes, the pastor came to preach, but the reward will go to you. You are the sponsor of that program. I had Pastor Adebo shared. He said, every single time you see us do Holy Ghost Night, only seven people sponsor it. They will pay for the buses that will bring people from far and near. They will finance the meetings. They will give honorarium to all guest speakers. So, when Baba say, you want to give your life to Jesus, come out. And people are rushing out in their hundreds. Ah, I want to buy a relation here, Baba Nikonko. I want to sponsor it. I want to sponsor terrorism. I want I want I want to sponsor terrorism. I want I want to sponsor terrorism. I want to sponsor terrorism. I want to sponsor terrorism. I want to I bomb all over his body but left his private part then I asked him why he said the imam told them that as they will explode and unbelief, people that don't believe in their religion die, he said that their private part will be reserved because seven virgins will be waiting for them in heaven look at that mentality what the bomb is a little one blue now. Oh God, praise the Lord. So, not to not talk about you sponsoring soul winning programs. Nobody won't offer for washing con church, massa man, man, only for silly. Oh, so bad. No, 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 I won't put my money down. Hey, convention, boy, we need convention partner. No, no, I won't put my money down. A hey, boy pass conference is coming. I won't put my money. No, use your resources to sponsor evangelical minded programs share here and finally E talking to people about what the Lord has done for you which means sharing your testimonies alone is a kind of evangelism And under that one too, inviting people to church is a kind of evangelism. As I summarize, go back to that same John, uh, Luke 15, 7. I'm summarizing now. Luke chapter 15 and verse 7. Put it on screen. The Bible says, for there is joy in heaven. Now look, I, I say to you that likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. Joy in heaven over one sinner. So when you are the reason for that joy, <laughs> you will see how God Will reward you. You now see that most of the things you are praying for, or you have fasted for, you have requested for in the place in, in His presence, God will release without stress. Are you blessed this morning? I didn't hear you. Have you learned something this morning? Ramos is here. Let's be on our feet as I pray for you. to go there Lord over mountains or land or sea I will do what you want me to do I will say 
what you want me to say. I will go. Let's close the service. It's 10 o'clock already. Make sure this word, you don't just hear it and let it go. No, no, no. Be a doer of this word. I pray that today you are baptized with fresh fire for evangelism in the name of Jesus. Everything about you will win souls to Jesus. I didn't hear your email. As you go into this new week, may the angels of the Lord protect you.